Renowned economist Professor Patutomi has asked Nigerian leaders to put the needs of the people first. Professor Patutomi made the call at the recent Sokoto Stakeholders Management Retreat held in Lagos. He says that leaders need to think first about the development of the society at large instead of thinking of their individual selfish needs. The essence of the state is to check this instinctive orientation of man to plunder. Because in the end, you lose out. You might plunder for this moment. And that plunder sets people against you, and one day you fall. The tragedy of human nature is many times those who bring down those who plunder become the new plunderers. So we must encourage a new civic orientation in our society such that people who come into public life realize that the advance of the common good does them personally well. Because the African philosophy is Ubuntu. I am because we are. Until we can create conditions where people in public service recognize that the advance of the common good of all is where you find the advance of the individual good. We are going to be challenged to make kind of progress with the policies we're talking about here. Because some individuals acting selfishly will destroy these great ideas that are being put forward. We need to create the arena of public virtue. You're watching the news at 10 on Channel Television, reaching you live from Lagos. Let's move over to business news now with Teniola Shoboali. Thanks, Gimba. Welcome to Business News. The Department of Petroleum Resources has handed over the All Mining License 98 to the Nigerian Petroleum Development Company, the upstream unit of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation. This is coming almost one year after Pan Ocean Oil Corporation's ownership of the asset, along with the asset of five other companies, were revoked for failing to meet up with its financial obligations to the federal government. Speaking at the handover ceremony in Abuja, the director of the department says the decision to take over the asset from Pan Ocean was in the best interest of Nigerians. For OML 98, the decision, as I mentioned, it was taken in fairness to 200 million people that they trust a company to manage their business. And they trust us to ensure that the business is right and is optimized. Before we do this, the record we have in DPR indicated that the reserve the 2P reserve stood at 43 million barrels for oil. And we have 20 million barrels for condensate and 393 million, uh, billion standard cubic feet of gas. We know before revocation, there's legacy debt of oil and gas royalties, concession rentals, gas flare penalty. This, we expect it to be settled by the previous venture because it's a legacy debt. It has to be certain. And that is our work, getting this for the 200 million people. Nigeria plans to appoint advisors for a $3.3 billion euro bond issue through a, an open competitive bid process and expects to complete an approval process for the sell soon. According to the Debt Management Office, the new euro bond will be used to partly fund the government's 2020 budget deficit and refinance an existing $500 million euro bond, which is due in January 2021. At its latest uh, euro bond sell in 2018, the country raised $2.86 billion, while multinational investment giant, the city group Standard Chattered Bank and local firm FSDH Merchant Bank acted as financial advisors. The government has been borrowing to fund growth after a 2016 recession slashed revenue and weakened the Naira. 
The African Development Bank has faulted the World Bank's statement that the upward debt trend of some African countries portends systemic risk of debt distress. According to the AFDB, the World Bank Group insinuating that the DFI had lower standards of lending and added to Africa's debt problem is misleading and inaccurate. The African Development Bank says the World Bank, which has significantly larger operations in Africa than the AFDB, approved 20.2 billion naira for Africa in 2018 compared to the 10.1 billion naira approved by the African Development Bank. Now, key indicators at the NSC ended Friday's session all in the red after persistent sell pressure hit more equities across the major sectors of the market. Layo Adegoki has the details of equities performance. Thank you for joining us on the Stock Markets Report. The bears had the upper hand at the stock market today after dominating the last two sessions this week as investors intensified profit-taking on some high-value equities on local boss. The latest round of sell pressure pushed the NSC's main index further away from the 28,000 level with an additional 0.39%, while total value of listed equities dropped by 57 billion naira due to losses from blue-chip stocks across the five major counters of the market. Stocks' performance on the price table ended with a negative margin of 19 losers, led primarily by the shares of Nimitz and Guinness, which lost 10% of their value, while Cavatin Lasako and Nigeria Police Microfinance Bank tops a list of nine gainers. Investors' appetite for equities also weakened further by 18.1 million units when compared to Thursday's session as 132.62 million shares changed hands in 3,000 189 transactions, largely driven by the shares of Zenit Bank, UACN, and United Capital. Well, that's it on the Stock Market Report. I'm Layo Adegoki. Thanks, Lyle. European stock markets were most hit today as major global indices closed Friday's session mostly lower as investors continue to monitor the coronavirus epidemic despite latest earnings reports. Here are some snapshots of the closing numbers for the day. And that's business news tonight. It's back to you, Gimba. Banking so easy, so simple. Dial star 894 hash now to experience it. You first, first bank. Brilliant, many thanks indeed, Tenula. While agriculture remains one of the most viable alternatives to an oil-dependent Nigerian economy, experts have suggested that knowledge of technology is a necessary tool to drive productivity and unlock investment opportunities. This formed part of discussions and thoughts by speakers at the maiden edition of the EcoBank Agribusiness Summit in Lagos. Participants at the event discussed ways to maximize the gains of agriculture and make it more attractive to the youth. The EcoBank Agribusiness Summit brings together players in the agric value chain and policy makers to discuss emerging global dimensions in making agriculture a truly vibrant sector for economic growth. <laughs> the initiative represents EcoBank's founding objective to integrate Africa's economy and make agriculture a major export potential in Nigeria. We work with various governments and businesses within our footprint to provide support in harnessing and mining value from huge natural resources across our dear continent. The success of this summit and its objective is therefore important to EcoBank. As of today, we already support the agri sector. Actually, more than 10% of our loan portfolio is to the agri sector and that is very close to 100 billion naira. And EcoBank Nigeria pledged a commitment that over the next three years, 
we have an agric fund of 70 billion naira that is available for supporting the agri sector. Technology and de-risking dominate presentations and discussions on modern ways of financing agriculture as a business. Imagine every state capital, Lagos, Kano, Abuja, you have young people having those greenhouses around, producing the vegetable for the day, the tomato for the day, the fish for the day, servicing the market for the day, making their money for that day. This is the future for young people. Agribusiness driven by technology, which is very easy for us to finance. Any agricultural system that works for the country and for the farmers has to have some de-risking mechanisms for the farmers. It's not enough just to have them start to invest and grow, grow more crops. But... The summit affords participants the opportunity of displaying products and services along agriculture value chain. All the participants at this summit are registered on a, on a database. As a bank and on this platform, we're able to connect you to who needs your produce, who has the ability to pay for your produce, so that we energize the value chain. Ecobank promises to sustain the summit as a national discourse to provide transformational solutions to the challenges in Nigeria's agricultural lending and development. Avila Natural, a skincare manufacturer, has introduced a new line of business focused on the production of natural and organic food and supplements. Unveiling of the company's new identity in Lagos, the managing director of Avila, Temitokwe Maegun, told contributors and distributors that the birth of the Avilan food was born out of the organization's desire to continue to seek more ways to enhance the well-being of its customers. Love you. Barely three years into skincare business, Avila Natural breaks forth with a new direction called Avila Foods. Unveiling of the logo, Avila Natural. The logo and tagline reveal the idea behind the new enterprise. All right, congratulations. This is a brand that will help you radiate from within. The unveiling also comes with the introduction of a wide variety of products, packaged organic food, herbal tea, food supplements, and seasoning. <laughs> Guests and friends of the company are given the opportunity to taste some of the tea products. We just have to understand the fact that they are what they eat. A lot of people just feel that they can just take anything you know, and that's why you see people going on the street and you find out that when one person eats them or something, the person will just fall and die. It's because they have not been taking care of their health properly and they are not conscious of what they eat. Distributors are already looking forward to expand their network with Avilan food products. There are lots of people with so many health issues that they can't even communicate with people. But we believe that with the inception of the food, it's going to heal a lot and it's going to help mankind generally. And in the area, in the aspect of business, it's going to bring more money for me because there's nobody that will wake up and not eat. So more people will buy the food. When the MD told me about Avila and about the natural food, food the tea and the supplements. I was happy. It's going to help us the, the dusticate our system and live a healthy life by living instead of living on chemicals. Hey, hey. All right. Folks, congratulations. The management of the company says it hopes to leverage on the remarkable sales network of its skincare products across the country to drive the distribution of the new range of Avilan food products. Still ahead on the news at 10, Egypt records first coronavirus case in Africa as China allocates over 11 billion US dollars for prevention and control efforts of disease spread. Plus, more from our London studios in around the world in five. Stay with us. <laughs> 